All right, so we, one of my older videos, we were dealing with symbolic truths in the Bible. And these symbolic truths are, you know, this is real, kids. This is real. Um, the, these, the things that I will bring up from the Bible, the lessons from the scriptures themselves, can teach you unbelievably valuable lessons in the here and now about how to succeed in life and how to realize your visions in this world. Promise. <laughs> People aren't reading this 2,000 years after the fact because it got nothing to say. People aren't that dumb. Much as, much as, you know, the atheists want to present it like that, that's just not how it really is. So let's take, for example, the book of Exodus. And when I say the book of Exodus, I'm actually kind of, uh, you can put numbers in Deuteronomy in there too, because I'm really just talking about the journey into the promised land of the children of Israel. Okay, one big, huge, symbolic story, right, right smack in the middle of the Old Testament. And it's a big, important one. It's some, some argue that the Exodus is the most important book of the Bible. Some are Old Testament, that it's the foundation of, of Judaism. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But here are the big symbolic truths of this particular story. And I'm including Numbers and I'm including Deuteronomy. Now, where are they going? The Promised Land. What does that represent? What that means is they're building their vision. They're heading from the present to their vision of the ideal society or their vision of utopia or their vision of the dream realized. Promised land, the land of God that God promised to them. So let's say you are building a company. Yeah, you and your friends. You say to your friend, you know what? I got this really good idea for a company. What's that? I'm going to, let's, uh, let's build gizmos and gadgets and sell them to imbeciles. <laughs> yeah, that's your company. That's your great idea for a company. Let's build gizmos and gadgets and let's sell them to imbeciles. And your friend's like, I'm not, I'm not convinced. You're like, there's a lot of money in it. Oh, wait, yeah, that sounds good. I'm in, come in. That sounds like a great idea. Okay, so now you're embarking on your journey to, the, to your God-given destination. You are building, you have started on your company. You are building gizmos and gadgets. And you're going to sell them to imbeciles for a lot of money. The symbolic things that they have to face in the wilderness of sin in the Bible. It's actually called the wilderness of sin. You can look that up if you want to. Are some of the very things that are going to do you in on your journey. I promise. I'll show you. I'll show you. What's one of the first most dangerous things that they find they come upon. And it's the first most dangerous thing you find and will come upon when you are building your company. Say you've got 30 people in their midst. The most dangerous people were themselves. The murmurers and the complainers. Talks the Bible talks about it constantly. And the, one of the key things about the Bible to remember is that when it's dealing with the great big symbolic, big, you know, big slow pitch over the home run truth, this thing you need to know, it will say it 15, 20, 30 times. Underscored constantly in the Bible, the tongue holds the power of life and death. Underscored constantly, their carcasses fell in the wilderness. It says, often it says because they didn't have enough faith. But the really important, the really important kernel of it is that they were constantly speaking death. They were constantly speaking negativity and defeat into the enterprise itself. Now, let's go back to our imaginary company that we're building. You've got a team of 30 men and there are 10 people. There is, there, is, there is a wilderness experience in your company. I promise. That's real world stuff. You don't start out with Apple computers. You start out in a garage with you and somebody else working on a computer. And the company hasn't been realized yet. And in between the period where you start and the promised land of your fulfilled vision, there is a wilderness period where it hasn't manifested in reality. And more than anything else, what will destroy your dream in its inception are the murmurers and the complainers. I promise you that is, no, that is so unbelievably capital T true that it will, it will save your enterprise if you listen to me today. Promise that's true. You've got a team of 30 people and there are five people who are speaking against the success of the enterprise. They're murmuring, complaining. They're looking at the here and now. That's a key concept. They are looking at today's results instead of tomorrow's vision. Throw them out because they will destroy you. I promise they're enemies of, they're enemies of the victory. Promise. 
I promise, take that totally to heart. They are death. That's what the Bible talks of them as. That's what they are. Why? You got the, you got, you're building the company. There are not going to be results in the real world for a long time. Hence the manna in the wilderness. Hello, hello, hello. There's not going to be results in the real world for a long time. All companies go through this, this period where the dream is deferred. Where you have to survive on next to nothing. And the person who says, you know, are we going to have to turn a profit this year because my kid needs to, be, has, my wife is this and my kid is that. Those people band together and they start complaining against the whole, bang, you're done. They will do it in, right at the inception. They will. They will kill it. Promise. That's a law of life. That's, that is such a big, tr important truth. And the, the whole story of Exodus is about that. Now, the, Moses is the leader in Exodus and he's underscoring of what, what you need to be to be a successful leader when you are starting your Apple computers. Ideally, a servant leader. Ideally, a servant leader who even takes time out in one part of the Bible to listen to all the, the to hear all the cases of the people who almost wears himself ragged in service of the people. That is the template for the type of leader that you are supposed to be in this world. And there are symbolic, deep symbolic templates. Keep in mind, this is a template for almost all visionary undertakings under the sun. And they all operate according to this. They all operate according to this. This is deep insight into how the world actually works. Every enterprise you build has a wilderness period, a period of gestation, a period where you walk across the desert with nothing to show. And the symbolic representation is mana. Now, supernatural provision is key because you will find, whether you believe in God or not, that you just kind of make it through the day. <laughs> you just kind of make it through the day. And the people who recognize that and they keep believing in the final outcome are the ones who are going to overcome. And the people who are speaking against the final outcome and complaining that you're just, we're just making it through the day. We're just barely getting by. Everybody knows you're just barely getting by. But some people have their face set like a flint towards Jerusalem, as the Bible tells you to do. Some people are looking at the vision in the future, and that's all they're focused on. That's how the Bible tells you to live in this world. That is the right way to live in this world if you want to succeed. I promise. It's a much better way to live in this world. It's a much wiser way. First of all, you don't drain any of your energies. The reason why the death speakers kill you is because they put the poison into everybody else. Tongue holds the power of life and death. Why do the people who are speaking death against the eventual triumph, they kill you? Because their poison gets in everybody else. They sow discouragement into everybody's heart. And everybody starts to listen to them if you keep them around. you got to get them out. They will destroy your Apple computers. They will destroy it. Because there's going to be a period between when you get the idea and when you don't have any results to show in the real world. That's the symbolic significance of manna in the wilderness. A period where you wander. where You, and, you know, in, re, in churches, in actual churches in the United States of America, people, they talk about it like this. They talk about a wilderness experience. People understand this and they deal with it as symbolic truths. They understand it and they talk about it the correct way. You know, they do. I've heard this talked about 15 different times. Underscored almost exactly as I'm underscoring it for you. Talk about, Christians talk all the time about a wilderness experience. Um, I guess that's enough for now. I'll go deeper into this. So that's just the beginning of dealing with the book of Exodus as a symbolic, the symbolic truths embedded in the book. That's all for now. Amen.